Hello everyone, I'm Karen Stumble, one of the Sunday School teachers here at White Lake United Methodist Church. Um, I'm here to do some activities related to the stories you've heard the last couple of weeks from Ruth and from Ruth. Um, today I'm going to concentrate on the, the first one that Ruth did, it was about Esther. Okay, I've always loved that story about Esther. Uh, I think it's because Esther did one of the greatest things in the Bible. She saved the Jews, and she's a girl, a girl hero. That really speaks to me. What Esther did took so much courage, or bravery, if you want to call it that. Um, courage is not the absence of fear. Um, Esther was very afraid. Courage is doing the right thing in spite of your fear. Esther did the right thing. She approached the king and told him she was a Jew, even knowing she could be put to death. But she had faith in God and in the king's love for her. So it was the evil Haman who was put to death, and Esther and all of the Jews, her people, were spared. Where did Esther find the courage to do such a dangerous thing? I believe she spent time with God in prayer, asking for his protection and his strength to do the right thing, even though she was afraid. Well, here's a demonstration to illustrate this. I'm going to list some fears that some of you may have. Some of them I have. Maybe Bob might have some of these fears too. Some people are afraid of spiders and snakes. I'm not so much spiders, but snakes, you never know which way they're going to go. So that kind of scares me. Thunder and lightning. Oh my gosh, my dog is terrified of thunder and lightning. She goes and gets in the shower. How about doctors or dentists? Some people are very afraid of them. Bugs or heights? Needles? How about germs and sickness? Crowds? Clowns? Being alone? Being in the dark? Getting bad grades? Monsters under the bed. Oh, 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 there's a biggie. I know there's not monsters under the bed, but, you know, sometimes your mind just runs away with you. So, everyone has fears. That is part of life, is fears. In Psalm 55, 22, it says, Cast your cares upon the Lord, and he will sustain you. So how do we take our fears to the Lord? How do we cast our fears on the Lord? We pray. We talk to God. Jesus overcame the world. Jesus is bigger than the world or our fears. So I have a pitcher of water right here. This is going to represent our fears. Okay? And I have a glass here. So, I'm going to put our fears in the glass, okay? We've got spiders and snakes. We've got thunder and lightning. Doctors and dentists. Bugs, heights, needles, germs and sickness. How about crowds and clowns? Being alone, being in the dark, getting bad grades, and don't forget, monsters under the bed. That's a lot of fears. That's a lot of things to be afraid of. Why is it leaking out of there? No fears. See the air? The air is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit holds back our fear. We do not have to be afraid when we talk to God. We will still have fear, but the Lord will overcome that fear. Okay? Okay. I'm going to do something very courageous now. Okay, 
takes faith to have courage. I think it takes courage to have faith. Well, see this hammer right here? I tied it up to there to the ceiling. Now, I'm going to let this hammer go. I'm going to let it go. Is it going to come back and hit me in the face? I have fear that it will come back and hit me in the face. But I have faith or trust that it will not hit me in the face. So, when your faith is greater than your fear, like Esther's, you can do courageous or brave things. It's going to hit me right in the chin. Oh, it did not hit me. Thank goodness, I didn't want to have a bruise on my chin. That is faith. And that is courage. Faith and courage go together. Esther was brave. Esther was still afraid. But she did the right thing. She had faith. And she had courage. And that comes from the Lord. So, like Ruth said, stand up for someone being picked on or bullied. Stand up for yourself and your God, knowing that you believe and that you have faith. So now, just because it's Christmas, we're going to do some Christmas crafts, okay? Most of you are going to know how to do both of these crafts that I do with you. I'm just giving you a reminder of some things that you can do. Some of you might have a lot of spare time right now. You're um, bored because you're not in school. And, you know, some of you little ones, you need to practice with your scissors and your glue, okay? And also... I just was thinking about it that a lot of people are not going to the stores right now. They're not exposing themselves to this stupid virus. And um, maybe mom and dad or grandma and grandpa, they don't want to go to the store and help you shop for Christmas. I want to remind you that there are so many gifts in this world that are not bought in at a store. Okay? Um, I just was thinking about that this morning that Ruth and Bob Tuttle, um, Right now when everybody's kind of hunkering down and staying home and, and just not knowing what to do and being kind of scared, Ruth and Bob have put it into overdrive and they are just leading this church in a wonderful direction. And their strength and their courage is amazing. Um, so just remember that there are things that you can do that are gifts for your mom and your dad or your grandma and grandpa, aunts and uncles, brothers and sisters. You can make a lot of things. Um, you can write stories. You can write letters to them and tell them how much they mean to you. Um, your gift of time, you sweep the floor, you wash the dishes. You just do what somebody asks you to do without arguing or without just say, okay, and be very agreeable and flexible. Those are gifts that you can give every day that you're not just at Christmas time, okay? But right now, we're gonna make what some of you already know how to make. And I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to do. I started with a red and a green piece of construction paper. As you can see, I don't have a full piece anymore because I have cut most of it up, okay? All you got to do here is cut strips so that you have a whole bunch of strips. You do not have to use red and green. You can use any color you have or any color that you want. You can make a very beautiful rainbow of color. Or you can just do Christmas colors. Red, white, and green would be really cool too. So you're just cutting strips out of that. I made the whole page into strips. And now you just need a glue stick. And then just put some glue on the ends and make a loop. Loop it back on the glue, stick it. Now 
I'm going to go red, green, red, green. You can do red, red, green, 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 red, green, white, red. But I'm going to go red, green, red, green, red, green. And all you got to do is put it through the loop and then stick it to itself. Okay? And look at where you can end up here. Red one through there and through there. Oh my goodness. You've got a huge red and green chain. You can hang it on the tree. You can hang it in a doorway. You can put it around a window. You can make it as long or as short as you want. Just depends on how long you want to sit and cut strips and glue them together. So there's a decoration for you. You can give that to your mom and dad. You can give it to a brother or sister to hang up. And they would just love to be able to decorate the house like that. Okay? Now here's another old, old, old tradition. All you need is scissors and a piece of paper. Doesn't matter what color paper. You're going to make a snowflake. Okay? So, first of all, I'm going to take this paper and I'm going to make it a square. So I'm going to, I just fold it, fold it over like that, and then I can cut it. And now I have a square instead of a rectangle, which is really what you want when you're going to make a snowflake, okay? Now, if I fold, I have it in, folded in half right now. If I fold it in half again on the fold, Take one side of the fold up to the other side of the fold, the point, fold it again, okay? And then do it again. Now, this is the center. The point opposite the center. If you just cut that off like that and open it up, Ooh, pretty cool shape. I like it. What if you want it to be round? I want a round snowflake. Well, then you've got to go from the, the side with all the different folds here. you got to go from the edge of that over to the other point. Okay? Now when I open it up, I've got a circle. Okay? Now what are we going to do? Well, let's refold it. I would like, how do I have it folded? Like that and like that. I would like to have some things on each down and across. So I have to look at those folds. I've got down and across. This is across and this is down. I'm going to put a little half circle and a triangle, a half circle and a triangle. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. A half circle, a triangle, a half circle. Remember, I'm cutting on the folds and a triangle. Open it up. Oh, that's pretty. But I want something in the middle here. I got it on the up and down, and I got it on the cross piece. I want something on the other folds on the diagonals. All right, fold it back up again. Boy, I'm struggling with how I had this folded.
There we go. Fold it back up. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to do really long skinny. Just a tiny little bit. I'm just going to cut a tiny little, it's a, it's a half circle, but it's really skinny. Just a little bit. Look at that little bit of paper that I just cut out of there. Now let's see what that did on our diagonals. Ooh, look at that. That's pretty. All right, now what? How about, ooh, I want the edge. I want the edge to have something fun. I'm gonna make a half circle on the edge and then a big triangle. And a half circle. Let's see what that looks like on the edge. Oh wow, that's pretty. All you gotta do is keep cutting and cutting. Fold it and then see where you want your design and then cut it, okay? Fold it and cut it. I want something in the middle of this here. So I'm gonna fold, make another fold and put something in the middle there. A really skinny. Same thing on this other one. I'm gonna make another fold. And really skinny cut. What'd that do? Look at what we're getting here. Wow, that's getting pretty. The more you cut it, the lacier and fancier it will get. Okay? And you have to decide if you want big holes or if you want little holes. It's hard to cut the little holes. Just keep going and going and look at what you end up with. And I'm going to tell you something right now. About seven years ago, my son made me a snowflake and it was just gorgeous. I hung it up in my window and it was my favorite decoration the whole season. I left it up all winter and it brightened my spirits all winter long in a very dark time for me. And that's something that you can do for your parents and your grandparents. You can brighten their spirits because you are just so happy, so energetic, so full of life, and that makes them have hope for the future, and it, and it gives them something to smile and laugh about. So give away your talents. Give away your gifts that you have deep down inside, okay? Um, do something for somebody this Christmas season, okay? In conclusion, I would like you to think about Esther this week, okay? She was afraid. Think of, think of some of the fears that you may have this week. What are you afraid of? Now pray to God. Ask him to help you with your fears, to overcome your fears, and ask for faith and courage of Esther, my hero. God be with you this week, and we'll see you again in a week or two, okay? I love you. God loves you.